afraid. I was a 16 year old girl at the time, living in a small city, a train ride or bus ride to the capital. I was going out on the bus to see my now ex. At the time where I lived, if you had a disability, you were given a card to help get around and travel for free. It does help out a lot. I have a little problem being slow in situations and very observant, but I'm very naive. So I got on the bus into town. It was the same as normal. It was a nice town, fancy enough where people were always walking around with little dogs by the beach and stuff like that. So nothing seemed out of place. Nothing ever happened around here. My ex didn't show up as normal, so I went back to the bus stop to get on the next bus home. I got to the stop. There was a few people there. Not many, but it seemed okay. A few minutes went by, the bus pulled up and I got on. I showed my pass to the driver and sat down in the back like I always did, taking out my headphones getting ready for the journey home. As the driver was closing the doors, an old man tapped on the glass and gestured him to open the doors. The man had a pass too. He flashed it and sat down in the back as well, but on the other side. He smelt really bad of alcohol. He had white hair and a green half trench coat with a flower wreath necklace hanging around his neck. He also had a six pack with him and proceeded to sit down and drink. Getting uncomfortable. I looked out the window and tried not to pay attention to him. The bus started moving. He started singing and talking to two girls and two guys who looked a few years older than I did. They obviously thought he was a joke because of how pissed he was and they humored him. He took off his necklace and started singing and putting it on one of the girls. She smiled and tried to ignore it to be friendly. But more to her friends I had obviously been looking at. It was so noisy. I couldn't help but turn my head, but his eyes met mine. I turned straight back to the window. He leaned over to me and asked me, how are you? And I said, fine, thank you. I didn't really want to annoy him or start anything, so I went and put my headphones in and pretended I was getting a phone call. Bitchy, I know, but I wasn't going to take any chances. As I opened my purse, my pass fell on the floor and I bent down to pick it up. It had fallen right beside his feet. As I got to put my hand on it, he stomped his foot down, and that immediately made me draw my hand back. He then picked it up and looked at my pass, and then at me. His eyes went wide, and he snapped. This isn't yours. A sexy little thing like you wouldn't have a reason to have a pass. You stole it. He said that loud enough to make me jump but not loud enough to raise attention to anyone else. I was honestly surprised. I had never had someone tell me something like that before or be rude or forward like that. So I just said, oh no, that's mine, trust me. I smiled and put my hand out to get it back. He snapped again. You don't have a disability. You stole this, I'm keeping it. Waving it in my face. I tried to grab for it quickly, but he took it away faster. I said, Please, just give it back. It's really mine. Try not to start anything. He started reading it, and the pass had been updated since, but at the time it was just a piece of paper with your name and address on it. He read my full name and said, That's a beautiful name. My blood went cold when I realized he was going to see my address. I said, Look! And pointed out the window to distract him, and he fell for it. I tried to get the pass back, and he stood up real quick. He was much taller than I thought he was. I'm 5'6", and he was probably around 6. I shouted when he got up because I wanted someone to notice what he was doing. He stared at me blankly, and just smiled. He just ran the three-fourths foot gap towards me, getting under my arm, pushing himself into my chest. I was forced out of my seat, and found myself being slammed into the window again and again. I felt the wind come out of me. It was like time had stopped and everyone else on the bus had vanished before one of the guys sitting in front ran down back, pulled him off of me and got my pass back. Luckily he pulled me up front. 
Unluckily, I had to spend another 10 minutes on that bus. He shouted a lot and started jumping and making everyone uncomfortable. He got quiet for a few seconds before a scream came from the back of the bus. One of the other girls were being choked by the old guy. He was trying to take his necklace off her really hard and her face went red before she ran down the front too. We both kind of just sat there looking at each other and a woman's voice quietly said, Don't mind him, dear. He is from the mental hospital down the road. He isn't all there. Keeping that in mind, I said thank you and got ready to get off. Really nervous that this guy would follow me. I took the shortcut getting off where you were meant to go left and it brings you to the estate entrance. But if you go right, there's a hidden back road by a roundabout and a gap that goes right to my house. The other way takes five minutes. This took two and it was risky to go home straight away. I waited for as long as I could until I pushed the button. When I did, the doors were already open and I had gone into a full-on sprint. I had already made the corner by the time I looked back. The bus was pulling off and he was standing by the door looking really angry. I kept running knowing he would possibly get off at the next stop and come and find me. I remembered then that he saw my address and did the only thing that I could. I ran to my neighbors. They lived wall to wall with me so I knew them a little. When they opened up I explained to them what had happened and they let me in. I also texted my mom because I wasn't going home and be alone when I knew someone could drop over. Not much happened after that. I saw him around a few months later but at the end of it I thought he might have been just too drunk to remember. Now when I get on the bus I am extra careful and make sure I know exactly where I am going in case I am ever put into that situation again. So to the creepy guy with flowers that attacked me on the bus, let's not meet again. I was just starting third grade when I met David, along with his little gang of bullies. From the day I was the target of his cruelty and his little rascal gang, everything happened to me from gum in my hair to being pushed on the playground. But the worst part is, not even his little group knew about it. The molestation. It all started when he followed me into the bathroom and turned off the lights. He started touching my hair and started throwing both insults and compliments. From my hair is so soft and beautiful, to stupid kaleidoscope head. My hair was always changing colors when I was younger. Then he started to do it all over. I wanted to scream but he was bigger than me in both height and size. Although I would later grow to be a taller person, which is one of the reasons why it might have stopped I think. Anyway for the rest of the year he continued the molestation. He would make me touch him in private spots while we were in therapy. I was in therapy for my learning disability, which was realized after first grade. My teacher was oblivious to the abuse along with my actual teacher. The abuse lasted almost until the end of third grade, when David luckily moved schools for apparently different reasons that I'm not 100% sure about. Although recently I've been going online to see if I can find people from my old elementary, middle and high school years that I lost contact with. And unfortunately his profile ended up crossing my path. His face is still the same except he has a little facial hair. Everything else is still the same. Still has the same unemotional eyes I remember. He has the same still old slightly chubby body with that same old stupid smile. I never hated another person in my life before David. He's the reason why none of my boyfriends could touch me. I only dated truly sweet people in high school for my fear of being touched and defiled again. Crying myself to sleep has been the only thing I could do, no matter how much I was called beautiful by my friends and family. I've even contemplated suicide in the past when I was in middle school, mainly when my depression was really bad. But I'm happy to say now I've been able to pull myself together after I broke up with my last boyfriend in junior year. I've been the happiest I have been in a long time. So for that third grade groper, David, screw you asshole and let's not meet. Did you like this video? Well there's more where that came from. 
please comment, like, share, and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter at Celestial Noor. I'll see you next time on Celestial Lore.